Hello, everyone. Today, we're diving into some really big news from Viking, the cruise line that's, of course, so famous for all adult immersive vacations. What will this mean for you and I and the cruise industry? Well, today, we're going to dive into that and find out. Let's talk about it. To understand where Viking's going, it's probably best to kind of focus on where they've been and where they are now. Viking is a privately held company that is owned by a Norwegian entrepreneur, Torstein Hagen. Hagen is a really interesting character. He's a Norwegian billionaire entrepreneur, and he actually has a training in physics, but he went to Harvard and he got an MBA and he was a partner at McKinsey and Company, the consulting firm. He was actually very big into the Norwegian save in 1974 when their business was tanking. In 1997, he founded Viking River Cruises when he bought four river cruise boats and focused on Russian river cruises. But in 2000, he purchased KD River Cruises of Europe, which brought Viking's fleet to a total of 26, making it the largest river cruising fleet in the world. In the U.S., the company's river cruises really took off after, in 2011, he sponsored PBS's Masterpiece at a time when Downton Abbey was playing. In 2015, the company expanded for the first time into ocean voyages in addition to river, and they introduced their first ship, the Viking Star. In 2021, a couple of years later, it introduced its first expedition ship, the Viking Octantis. Today, the company has more than 90, 90 vessels, and it is on all seven continents. It remains the top river cruise company in the world, having more than 50% of the total market. The company recently shortened its uh, name to Just Viking, citing the need to go beyond cruises and into adventures and other elements of travel. Of course, you can't talk about cruising in modern times without talking about COVID. And of course, in the beginning of COVID, cruise ships really took a hit um, because there were people on these ships. Uh, the virus was going around. They didn't understand what was going on. People were being quarantined. Uh, ships couldn't go into port. And ultimately, they wound up shutting down the cruise industry. So you can imagine this huge investment that you expect to be on the water, generating revenue all the time. And they're now all in port and they're all empty and you're making no money. Huge impact from COVID. That impact was everywhere. Revenue losses were in the billions. So no matter how stable you are, even a great company like Viking, who absolutely had a wonderful business, started to hurt. And they're sitting there with multi-billion dollars of investment sitting idle. You're generating no income. You have all of this expense and your business is tanking. Uh, people are making tough decisions from staff layoffs to selling ships to doing a lot of things. And it was a really tough time to be in the cruise business. This was a really tough time, and it showed, of course, the cruise industry's vulnerability to world events. But like most things, out of all that bad came some good. The cruise industry had to figure it out. They figured out new protocols, new sanitation techniques, and other things that ultimately today make cruising a lot safer. It wasn't easy, but some good did come out of this. With those new protocols and, of course, COVID subsiding for the most part, uh, business has been coming back. And, of course, there was all this built-up demand, and so cruising is actually making a really strong comeback. So now the companies are faced post-COVID with kind of the aftermath of COVID and what to do. Uh, after making those adaptations like they did for safety and other things, now they're left with a business that's still reeling from the impact of covid the debt, the, the changes that they had to go through and make, some voluntarily, some involuntarily because they had to. And now they're all trying to figure out what does cruising look like? What does the cruising business look like going forward? 
Of course, there was a lot of impact to deal with. Uh, of course, the cruise companies were just so focused on safety and getting people back on the boats and getting their business that was absolutely idle back to running again. And they're still struggling with that some. But after that, they had to stare into the abyss of debt. And it was huge. Carnival, $35 billion in debt. Royal Caribbean, $24 billion in debt. And Norwegian owned $13.4 billion. This is just debt that accumulated as their business sat idle and they reeled from no revenue for all of this time. Of course, these are publicly held companies, so they don't just answer to their customers and to their employees, but they answer to Wall Street. And, you know, Wall Street understands to an extent that they're dealing with all of this debt. Um, there's not an expectation that they immediately get rid of all of it, but there is an expectation they pay it down and refinance it so they can get the business back on track, else their stocks are going to tank and they won't have the investment they need uh, or ownership in the company that's supporting them. So they're, they're kind of walking that line. At the same time, they have a need to reinvest uh, in terms of their ships, in terms of buying new vessels, in terms of renovating what they have, staying competitive, that kind of thing. So they're dealing with this debt and at the same time trying to stay competitive in this very new world uh, after COVID. So with all of that, what is Viking doing and how are they dealing with this post-COVID nightmare with all of the success that they've had, with all of the challenges that they have and all the opportunities that they want to seize, what's next for them and how does that affect you and I? So Viking has been working on figuring all this out. Of course, dealing with their debt, which was around $4.7 billion in 2024, according to Bloomberg. They're dealing with opportunities that they see in the market. They've got a thriving, growing business, and they're trying to figure out how to deal with and optimize this in the right way for their business. In 2023, the company sold $720 million in junk bonds to finance their debt and get it in better shape than it was in. Um, but this is not the only step that they're looking at. For the first time ever, this privately held company is actually going to the financial markets and considering a move that would take the company public. This is a big deal because it's, of course, been privately held and owned uh, at the discretion of the current owner. Now they're looking at going to the market and what is seen as about a $500 million IPO or more uh, that they've been talking about. Bank of America, JP Morgan, UBS, and Wells Fargo are reportedly working with them. And while it seems like a move that may be out of desperation, there's really a lot here. It's actually a belief in the market. If you think about it, if you're going to take your business to an IPO and go out there and try to sell it for the first time, you believe that it's going to be at a good value, else you wouldn't do it. Um, and they really do believe, and I think most of the financial market believes, that this would be a good opportunity. So they're looking at this now. So if IPO happens now, all of a sudden Viking, this private company, is going to become a public company. What does that mean? Well, we'll find out and explore it a little bit. So to understand what happens when a cruise line goes public, we can look to the past. Of course, none of those had COVID-19 involved, like Viking does, of course. Um, but if you look at Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, and even Lindblad, uh, they were all private companies that wound up going public. In all of those cases, they pretty much took the investment that they got from the selling the shares and the IPO and went to expand the business. They grew their fleets. They made things better. Bigger. They said, if we're doing X amount of these, then 3X of these gives us scale and we can grow this business and return a nice profit to our shareholders. We get scale in terms of our operations and that kind of stuff. So the question is, now that we're in COVID-19 and Vikings looking at it, what are the opportunities for Viking? And what do we see that could come with a Viking IPO? So we don't know if Viking will IPO or not. 
but if they do, and we think they will, uh, you know, the things that usually happen in IPOs are a few things. In Viking's case, we think there'll be more ships. If you've got a good business model and you've got investment and you've got people willing to invest in your company, then you would expect to see growth. You've taken a model. Let's go do more of that. Let's get scale. If we've got 10, let's do 15. Let's do 20 because that just gives us more profitability, more scale, more ability to grow the business. Now, with that comes challenges in terms terms of maintaining quality, maintaining the things that you've always done. But I think Viking believes they could do that and they probably can. The other thing that comes, though, with it is if you're a public company, you're going to have increased scrutiny. It's not just about your owners, your employees and your customers anymore. You're going to have to deal with the financial markets. You're going to have to deal with investors. You're going to have to deal with institutions that own your stock. So there will be more cooks in the kitchen in terms of running the business. And then, of course, lastly, a focus on profitability. If you're a business owner, you can run your business the way you see fit. You can take uh, an investment and let it pay off in whatever time you wanted. Most public company investors are not that patient. So there's an expectation of profitability and you have to report earnings and you have to kind of say how you're doing. Uh, there'll definitely be more pressure on Viking, like any public company, to focus on and deliver profitability. So those are the most likely scenarios that would happen with Viking or with any probably company that went in from a business that was privately held to one that's publicly owned. So what's the bottom line, all this? Well, we don't know if an IPO is coming. We think one is coming. I think there's one coming for sure. Uh, and when it comes, we think they'll pull it off. I think that Viking will go to the market and I think the market will like it. And unlike uh, a lot of times, I think Viking will figure out how to maintain their secret sauce. They're smart enough to know that they have a winning formula that is, makes very loyal people that really pay a lot of money for their products. So they'd be crazy to intentionally screw that up. Now, I'm sure there'll be growing pains and challenges, but our belief is that the IPO will probably happen. They'll get this infusion of cash and they'll probably grow the business. They'll be able to, of course, get rid of some of the debt and do that kind of thing. And there'll definitely be changes. You don't ever go to a totally public company after being private and see no changes. But we really believe that they'll pull it off. We'll see. So we'll keep an eye on it. You keep an eye on it. And if you're interested in other cruise related activities, we've got a lot of videos out there. So join us. We'd love to have you on our channel. And thanks for paying attention today. See you out there.